Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy OG Black. Um, been off a couple days, been doing a little research and making sure everything's okay, making sure my, my process, my my research is, is all 100% correct. About a week ago, I made a show about about the Cartel Sinaloa and the Michoacan Cartel uniting forces. I'm not saying I told you I was I was right. I'm not telling you that Mr. Black was was correct or any of that. But guess what? Michoacan's on fire. Mitchell's on the run, and people are dying everywhere. Last night, um, just last night, the the head of the of the national security, technically the head of the national security, because the way it works in in Michoacan is is very different than anywhere else. Michoacan has a thing called the auto defenses, which means auto defenses. I mean, to tell you the truth, I'm gonna get into today why why Michoacan is. It, is the way it is right now. Metro is having a hell of a time trying to, to fight. And there's one guy, one guy only in Mexico that can say he ain't been scared of Metro. Metro ain't really done nothing to him. I'm going to say his name right now. You know, not his real name, but I'm going to say his name. The government knows who I'm talking about already. Everybody knows who I'm talking about over there in Michoacan in the rancho. So, you know, they call him the abuelito, which means the grandpa or the old man. Um, this abuelito is, he's a smart man. He's homegrown. He's like Mecho. He's from Michoacan. Um, he was born in La Guaje. Um, I have personal knowledge that he was born there and stuff like that. Uh, my family, once again, I'll tell you again, they're from Michoacan and people know about us and stuff like that over there. Um, El abuelito has, has risen through the ranks quietly though. Very, very quietly. He learned. From his compadres, La Tuta, El Chango, and um, Old Chayo, Nazario. He learned from them. He learned more from Nazario than anybody else. Um, he never really hung around with La Tuta or El Chango. Uh, the, abuelito, the abuelito is more old school. He tried to stay away from the narcotics. He knew the narcotics would, would cause attention from the government, from the U.S. government. So that's how he's been able to to operate for so long. Is he a narcotics drug dealer? Maybe. Is he a t homegrown terrorist? Maybe. Um, the abuelito is a very powerful man right now in Michoacan. Mecho is having a hell of a time going against him. Um, Mecho for at one time had the government on his support, like Shadow had said. 100% support of the government. Something happened. Someone wasn't paid off. Someone got mad. Somebody slept with someone's wife. Someone got killed. Someone beat up somebody. Something went wrong. Um, the government's done a whole 360 degree shift on on Mecho, which is weird. Because usually they, when they go with one cartel, they stay with them long enough until they that's it. Until they get tired of them or the cartel gets tired of them. So the Mexican government, once again, has done something that me and Shadow talk about all the time. Choosing choosing two evils right there's two evils here but they're just choosing the lesser one that's all it really is um right now metro is fighting like a dog in michoacan and the abuelito is giving it to him um i'm gonna tell you something about michoacan the state of michoacan it is a very different state than than any other state than sinaloa than juarez than um Then all these major cartels like the Arano Felixes and all these old cartels, um, Michoacanos have a really, really, really different way of processing and working. I'm going to tell you something that my family told me once. I'm from the United States of America. When I worked in Mexico, I was like, hey, man, I have a problem, man. My people were like, what's the problem, Mr. Black? I said, this is my problem. You see those assholes right there? Those are cops. You see those assholes over there? Those are federal Mexican agents. I said, my next question is, what are we? And my buddy's like, well, we're working. I said, no, we're goddamn criminals, I told him. Okay? I told him, how the fuck are we going to work with these guys? When these are the same guys trying to put us in jail. These are the same guys that convict us. These are the same guys that beat the shit out of us. These are the same guys that kill us and stick us in holes. These are the same guys that take fucking a monthly income tax from us. And you want me to work with these motherfuckers? <laughs> you know, OG Plex Chicano. He grew up in the U.S., 
He went weekends, summers, and Mexico. I've been back and forth from Michoacan all the way back down to Tijuana. You know, Michoacan, I grew up in a barrio in, in, in California, you know. I have a certain code of ethics, a certain code of way. You know, in my families, I've always had one problem, just like any other Michoacano. There's no way in hell I'm going to work with the government who's trying to stick me in jail and kill me whenever they want to. Nah, you got something really messed up. And people don't know this about Mecho. You want to know how Mecho really, really got famous and how he got such movement? So you know, when Mecho came to the town my family's from, his proposal was this. He said, listen, Mr. Black's family, you guys been here for a long time. You've been in the drug trade for a long time. You've lost a lot of members of your family for a long time. But let's just be honest. They said, you guys don't have shit. You don't have anything. You ain't even got a pot to piss in. Because the U.S. government and the Mexican government that took everything you guys got. And people don't understand this. I'm not trying to get off subject or anything. But let me just tell you like this. When I got arrested, the U.S. government seized $55,000. The U.S. government seized 10 pounds. Ooh, okay. People are like, okay, 10 pounds. To us, those 10 pounds were like 5,000 bucks, 3,000 bucks wholesale, which wasn't a hit. The drugs is never a problem, people. The money's a problem. You can get drugs back and forth. Money, once it comes in, hard to get it back once they take it away. So the money part's important. Okay, so it was $50,000, $55,000 hit, another $3,000 hit. So $60,000, let's round off to 60, okay? My bail, my first bail was $250,000 at 10%. Do the math. Okay, so we're just going to add another, we're just going to another 20 on there just to be cool. That's 80 grand, okay? 80 grand off the bat in one night, okay? Then the next day, another 15, 25, why? For an average lawyer. Your average lawyer now in any drug taste is, is a standard $10,000 fee. A good one's a $20,000 fee. And once you get about that $20,000 fee, you get very good lawyers. And that's just a standard fee for taking your case, reviewing it. Going to court a couple times, him whacking you off and telling you, hey, you know what, we're going to postpone this case for a couple of months. You know what I mean? Pretty much all he's doing is just sitting on your case. He ain't doing shit. He just wants more money. Um, so, you know, the Michoacanos have something really important that, that most other states don't have. And I'm going to compare them to the Tijuana Ariano Felix cartel. Just like the Juarez cartel. They take the Chicanos, the southern Mexican Chicanos, their cousins and stuff from L.A., from Orange County, from San Diego County, from San Bernardino County, from Riverside County, all the way up from Bakersfield, all the way down. Any Sureño, Southsider, you know, and if they got family, you know, they go over there, you know, and, and, and the Michoacanos, you got to know something. They have really big bases in L.A., Orange County, everywhere, because they, when they migrated from Mexico, they got there. So most of these Chicanos, like myself, go back to Mexico, and guess what? They get employed for the cartels as sicarios. Now... Most of them who do work over there do get some military training, but basically most gang members already know how to handle guns and shoot guns because they've been out on the street. But they do get some training. Metro right now is just, he's just hurting. El Abuelito is taking it to him. Abuelito just united all of what's left of Michoacan, which is, which is, which has been a rarity. But Michoacanos have always been able to be united. Right now, it's back to the old way. El Mecho's the new Seta. Sinaloa and Michoacan together again as buddies. Once this common thread is gone, separate and go back to their old ways. Um, and Michoacan yesterday was on fire. Was on fire. On fire. And I didn't want to say I told you so, guys, but I told you so. Um, I'm going to give you guys a little brief history about Metro and why he's not wanted in Michoacan. This is a two-part version of, 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 of what's going on in Michoacan. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of history about Metro on my next one. Hope you guys enjoy it. It's your boy OG Black. Giving you guys guys a fire. Hey, man, smash, like, subscribe. Um, tell your friends, man, the truth. You know what I mean? I'm trying to be on the positive level. Give you guys a good a good. A good way of seeing things and, and, and knowing the truth. Stuff that the news ain't going to report on you. Do you guys even know what's going on in Michoacan? Do you know what's going on in Tijuana? You know, and this isn't something I hear on the news or whatever. These are phone calls I'm, I'm giving back and forth. You know what I mean? On the flip phone. You know, hey man, guess what happened? Boo, 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 boo. You know, um, I wish I knew how to upload live feeds and, and videos because I would. 
I haven't, I haven't got there and I'm learning guys and I'm learning. You know, this is a, a learning process for myself. I hope this YouTube channel grows and I hope you guys like it, man. I'm trying to be more consistent, but YouTube's been, YouTube's been on me, man. You know, and I like to thank Shadow for being my friend. You know, good looking out, Shadow, for, uh, for all your help. You know, and, 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 all, and all, all your non-help, you know, being your friend is nice, you know. But being your friend isn't that nice sometimes, Shadow. <laughs> you know, so it's your boy OG Black. I'll be back with another one. I hope you guys like it. Smash, subscribe, like. You know what I mean? And remember, guys, prison, death, and illness. And remember, hug your family, hug your loved ones, man. You know, Mr. Black's been going through a hard time. You know, and you got to remember, man. You got to love your family, love your wife, love your kids, love those who've been for you, you know? And I'm going to tell you guys something. Make it a point. Make it a point. Make it a point to let people in your family who you think love you, who you think love you, and who you admire, to not to take you for granted. Those special skills and, and, and things that you have that God gave you, that's what makes you special and unique. So if you got a little lazy eye, you got a little crooked tooth, you know, you walk a little funny, you know what I mean? Those are your traits, man. That's why God made you special, man. Don't ever change for anybody, man. It's your boy OG Black saying peace. I'm out. Catch you guys in a little bit.